Money Marvels from Museum on Demand. The Penny. We have been making and using coins in Scotland for nearly 900 years. Let's start by exploring the history of our oldest coin, the penny. Before people in Scotland had coins, they bartered with one another or swapped things they had for the things they wanted. Three onions for a bunch of carrots. Deal. They also paid for things with their loyalty or by doing jobs for one another. These methods of payment continued even when coins were introduced. The first Scottish coins were made for King David I in 1136. He copied the idea from King Stephen of England, who did have coins. King David's coins looked like this. You can see his name here. It's difficult to make out the picture because the coin is so worn. It's about 900 years old. It's meant to be the king's head. This coin has gone very dark with age, but it's easier to see the head of King David shown in profile. There is a cross on the back or tail side of the coin. The coins had the king's head to show who had given permission for the coins to be made. It's against the law to make a coin without my permission. That's why the queen's head appears on our coins today. Our first coins were called pennies, but they have changed a lot. Similar size. And a better circle, I suppose. But what's happened to the colour? And who is this? The value has also changed. You can't get much for a penny today. You might get one sweet, if you're very lucky. But 900 years ago, a penny was a lot of money. People like soldiers or labourers were paid a penny for a day's work. What can I get for a penny? You could get two chickens or 24 eggs. Or two cooking pots, or a tunic, or eight pints of ale. Now, let's see how our first coins were made. This picture shows people making coins in the 14th century. They're working in a mint. The word mint comes from the name of a Roman goddess, Juno Moneta. Early Roman coins were made in her temples. The word money also comes from her name. First of all, Silver was melted down to make into bars or ingots. This was done in a furnace. You can see the containers called crucibles in which the silver was heated. The bars of silver were then hammered into sheets of the right thickness. This person is using a small anvil resting on a log. Then somebody had the job of cutting out the metal discs or blanks by hand. This explains why the coins weren't perfect circles like ours. Finally, a design was put onto the blanks to turn them into coins. This was done to guarantee the coins had been made to the right weight and therefore the right value. But how were the pictures put onto the coins? This is done using two heavy metal cylinders called dies, like these. The images for the coins are carved into them. This is a blank, ready to be turned into a coin. Take the blank and place it on top of the die followed by a collar piece to hold the dies in place. The upper die is then struck with a single blow from a hammer. There you go, I have a replica medieval penny, made in the same way coins were made in Scotland for the first 500 years of production. For 150 years, pennies were the only coins used in Scotland, but there are problems with having only one type of coin. Two chickens for one penny. But I only need one chicken. What can I do? No problem. Just cut your penny in half. Of course. Half the metal equals half the value. <laughs> can I have six eggs? People cut their pennies into quarters too. A farthing or forthing is the name for a quarter of a penny. Later, when quarter penny coins were used, they were known as farthings. They were pretty small. Have you heard of a penny farthing? It was the first machine to be called a bicycle. It had a large front wheel and a much smaller rear wheel. The name comes from the Victorian penny and farthing coins. The bigger front wheel was supposed to help you ride fast. We've seen a few pennies now and you may have noticed how different they look. They're made from different metals and they're different sizes. Coins used to be worth the weight of the metal they were made from. 
the silver used to make this penny was worth a penny. Over time, silver became so valuable that when pennies were made to the right weight, they became too small to use. Eventually, pennies had to be made from a less valuable metal, copper. The first copper pennies were made in 1797 in the reign of George III. They were the biggest pennies ever made. Each one weighed an ounce, or about 28 grams. That's the same weight as eight pennies today. It was also the first coin minted on a steam-powered machine. It was called the cartwheel penny because of the unusual raised rim around the edge. Pennies stayed roughly the same size for a very long time. This Victorian penny is just over a hundred years old. This Elizabeth II penny was made around 50 years ago. Pennies were this size until 1971 when decimalization happened. Decimalization? What's the point? Until then, people used pounds, shillings and pence. 12 pennies equaled one shilling, 240 pennies or 20 shillings equaled a pound. 12, 240, 20. It can't have been easy to work out money sums. After decimalization, everything became divisible by 10. There were 100 pennies in a pound. Ah, far more sensible. The pennies also started to look like the ones we use today. Oh, she looks very young. These pennies look the same, but there's a big difference between them. Pennies used to be made from copper, but copper became too expensive. We now make our pennies out of copper-plated steel, which is magnetic. All pennies made after 1992 are steel, but our newest pennies have a different design on the back. When this is put together with the other new coins worth less than one pound, they create a shield with the royal arms. Our pennies have an incredible story. And today, there are still about 10.5 billion of them in the UK. So the next time you spot a penny, spare a thought for this mighty coin that has been 900 years in the making. Thanks for watching.